On today's Apple Daily, ceramic shield seems legit. MagSafe controversies, and 72 hours with the brand new iPad Air 4. Plus notification squad updates. This is the Apple Daily. My name is David for Living on iPad, and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. If you want the latest Apple news, leaks, and rumors every weekday at 12 UTC, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the notification bell so you can join my notification squad by letting me know in the comments that you did all those things. That will get you a shout out at the end of the videos. Today at 5 GMT slash UTC, we have got a new video going live, which is all about whether it is a good idea or not to buy an Apple Silicon Mac on the day of release or whether you should wait uh, because is it gonna be a rough launch or not? So check that out if you're interested in Apple Silicon Macs. Based on what everyone seems to watch on my channel, yes, you do like Apple Silicon. So just go and watch it. Ceramic Shield seems legit. From the tests that are going live on YouTube right now and different places testing stuff, it seems like Apple's claims about Ceramic Shield are pretty legit, which is great. It's nice to know when they tell you that something is way stronger than other smartphones that it actually is. What is surprising, however, is that it seems that not only are they more drop resistant, but they're also more scratch resistant, which tends to be the trade-off that you make less likely to break when you drop it it tends to also become slightly easier to scratch because it's softer, therefore it's not as brittle. Mobile reviews, eh? Tested with a force meter and a most hardness test, the iPhone 12 uh, display survived a point force of 442 newtons, which is pretty impressive, uh, versus the iPhone 11's 352. So 442 versus 352, 90 more newtons of force. And it only scratched on a level seven of the hardness test versus six for the iPhone 11. So both ways, it's got better. So that's really nice to know. Everything Apple Pro has also run their now traditional annual drop tests with the displays supply, surviving multiple drops from six feet straight onto concrete on the display. That is impressive. And even at 10 feet, although the Iron X glass on the back didn't fare quite so well. MagSafe controversies. Every time Apple releases a new phone design, it is obligatory that there is some sort of gate. We had antenna gate when uh, Steve Jobs had to tell everyone how to hold a phone so that they didn't cover the antenna bands. We had Ben Gate where people were putting iPhones in their back pockets and then sitting on them and they were starting to curve. I think it was the 6 probably that did that. I think it was the first one with a slightly bigger design. Uh, and there's always something. There's always something wrong. And this year it is Mag Gate or Mag Safe Gate or Gate Gate Safe Gate Gate Magnus Gate Maggie Gate Mag Magnet Safe. MagSafe? MagSafe Gate. MagSafe Gate. What is MagSafe Gate? Well, it depends who you ask, really, because there are loads of little niggles, to be completely honest, these are, I would say. But let's have a quick look through what's going on and see if any of them are, like, legit concerns. MagSafe charges non-MagSafe phones slowly. So Apple does list these as being compatible, and they are compatible because we did a test and you can charge an iPhone 10s or whatever Qi charger compatible phone you put on it, it will charge it. It will charge it slowly though. The guys over at Max Tech did some tests and they actually had uh, wattage meters going and they were like between one and three watts. Uh, for anything that's not got MagSafe, it's supposed to charge at uh, seven and a half watts. It was not. And for obviously the iPhones with MagSafe, 15 watts, which does seem to be about what they're doing. Basically, don't buy MagSafe, which is an expensive Qi charger with magnets in it, if you have a phone that doesn't have magnets in it to use an expensive Qi charger. That seems to be the big takeaway here. Apple, just clarify that on the website, it's just not a great charger for things that aren't MagSafe, sorry. MagSafe doesn't work like on a Mac, so you can still pull your phone off the desk. Well, yes, that is true. If you want it to actually attach properly, like, yeah, I suppose you could have put it down the side on like a smart connector type thing. Uh, it wouldn't have been as nice of a thing and you wouldn't be able to reuse that connection and the magnets for anything else. So I think they've made the right decision. This is just a, well, that's not what MagSafe used to be kind of argument. So I don't think that one's really justified, soz. MagSafe might mark the back of your iPhone or case. Now, it does seem like there's a few issues at the moment where the aluminium ring on the outside of the MagSafe charger is 
clattering onto stuff a little bit hard um, and it's a very difficult thing because you can't kind of tune magnets to approach slowly and then grip hard. Uh, it's one of those inverse square things, the closer it gets the, far, the stronger the force. If you want it to attach strongly it is going to squish a bit of leather and it's probably going to clatter against the back of a glass phone. Although I very much expect that within days there will be silicon uh, silicon bits that you can put over your MagSafe charger and that just takes away all of that impact. So I guess, yeah, that's a legit concern, but it's very easily fixed. Also, MagSafe does appear to work through a case without magnets, which is exactly what you would expect to happen. It's just that the magnets that get put in there are to help it attach better because you're further away from those magnets because there's something in between. And if you remember, I've just said that the closer you get to a magnet, the stronger the force is. And that's why they put more magnets in the cases. If those things ruin MagSafe for you, also do make sure you've got a 20 watt charger for them. There's a few people calling it a scam because you have to buy a charger to plug into the cable, but Apple's always sold the cables separate from the chargers. So, I don't know why you think it would be different. And 72 hours with the iPad Air. I love this thing. This thing is awesome. Um, I have never had the pencil before. That is really cool. I do like Scribble. Everything about this is elegant. Everything is snappy. There's nothing to dislike about it. I have put on a, uh, sorry, my script is on here, but I have put on a matte screen protector uh, to give it that kind of paper likey kind of feel for drawing. Um, we've done a bit of that. If you've got kids that want to draw on your iPad with your Apple Pencil and you're willing to let them. My kids really like drawing in the Notes app, uh, but there is a thing that you can do, which I didn't know you could do, which is if your screen is turned off on your iPad and you tap with the Apple Pencil, it will start a new note, but you can't access any of the others. So you can't delete your notes that you need and uh, you can't have, um, uh, yeah, basically it's just, it's a kind of secure way for them to do a bit of doodling without risking your data that you've got on the iPad, which seems like a really good little tip. I don't know if it's just a well-known thing, but I found it out and I thought it was really cool. Uh, what else have I put? Uh, absolutely in love with the design. I wish the colour was a little bit brighter on, not on the screen, but on the back, because this is blue apparently, but it looks very much like a kind of mid-grey. Um, I wish it was more kind of towards the Pacific blue in the iPhone uh, 12 Pros. They look really, really cool. Not as keen on the blue on the iPhone 12 itself, but I think that would be a really nice kind of look for the iPads. Not having 120 hertz uh, bothers me not at all, which is exactly what I expected. Um, this thing is absolutely snappy enough. I don't see any mo motion blur. I don't see any chopping. I don't see any dropped fl frames. It's just, it's just snappy and fast and quick. Um, I also ran some benchmarks on this and on that, and this is 50% faster than that. So this gets a like 1500 single core score on Geekbench 5, and that gets like 923. So it's more than 50% faster. Uh, this thing is a beast. Also, the video that's coming out later today, I edited entirely on here. It's shot on the uh, G7 up there and then entirely edited on here. The only things that I grabbed was my uh, graphics package, which pulled in through Dropbox and then did it all on LumaFusion on here. So really enjoyed that. Um, absolutely no problems with it. I think there's a couple of little bugs in LumaFusion at the moment. Just um, when you do a bit of intense editing, it decides to stop doing playback. Uh, even when you're pressing the button, but if you quit the app and then open it again, it doesn't lose any of your work and it's all still there and it works again. So I think that might just be a little bug that needs to be squashed in LumaFusion since iOS 14. Other than that, I've got no complaints with this thing at all. I'm really, really happy with it. Um, I've already over half filled it, but <clears throat> there is a bunch of stuff that was on there that I don't need. I've now taken my iCloud stuff off of it. It's 64 gigs, which should be plenty, but I did dump like a five gig uh, video file onto it to edit and then had the uh, render files and all that sort of stuff going on. So probably not too fair on it. So let's get on to Notification Squad. Uh, two new members again today, uh, Ratnam Yadav and uh, Little Mountain Life. Um, thank you so much for joining the Notification Squad. If you want to join, um, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, leave me a comment to let me know that you did, and I will give you a shout out in the next video that I record. And 
I've left this till last because uh, I only want my hardcore fans who watch the whole videos to know. Um, may well be rebranding the channel. Uh, living on iPad doesn't necessarily make sense for what we're actually talking about. I'm so excited about Apple Silicon, and it seems like you guys are as well, that I think I need to make the channel more kind of general Apple because that's what I'm into. It's not just about iPad. Originally, when I set up the, the blog page, which was came before the uh, YouTube channel, uh, livingonipad.com, what I was trying to do was move over to uh, doing that whole iPad life where I do everything on my iPad. Now, with this thing, I probably could do, but I really like my Macs and I'm really excited for Apple Silicon, so that's kind of falling by the wayside a little bit. So I'm deciding whether I'm gonna go with my name, with David Eden Sangwell as the name of the channel, or whether I go with iCave or something like that, or something completely different. If you've got suggestions, let me know down there. Um, and it, obviously, if you've got any questions for any of the upcoming shows, uh, hashtag iCave answers, and I will happily answer them in the show for you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.